Thank you. We'll never forget you. Welcome back to the round table. I'm Ostrich Vox and Cartoon Eric has released the first official trailer for Infinity Train. Not just a teaser like we got last year with San Diego Comic Con, but a full blown proper look at the show. This trailer was unlocked through a puzzle on Cartoon Eric's website, where if you entered in the right keys, you would be taken to the trailer. And as always, we're gonna break it down, try to figure things out, connect some dots, and get a general idea of where the story could go from its first few episodes. And of course, spoiler warning. If you want to go into the series blind or you don't want any predictions that may be true, click off now. With all that said, let's jump in. We open with Tulip and her friend, a brand new character known as Michaela, departing their school bus, which reads North Middle Branch, which indicates Tulip is in middle school. But then would the high school be called North High Branch? The character's 12 years old. Either way, she's definitely in middle school, if not late elementary. Tulip asks what Michaela's plan is for fun while Tulip is away at game design camp. This establishes Tulip's interest in coding and ties into Tulip's real life influence. Back in March 2018, Card Network revealed in a fax video that according to Owen Dennis, if Tulip was a real person, she would take programming classes. After women programmers and engineers from Google spoke at Cartoon Network, Dennis began to form the idea of Tulip in his head. Tulip is very analytical. She's into numbers and science. Perfect for a sci-fi show where numbers play a huge part in it. Dennis likes to figure out an elective class a character would take in high school, as he believes it paints a good picture of who the character is as a person. Which is a pretty neat and accurate way to look at things. Now Tulip is also seen eating a raw onion. It does seem a little off-putting and quirky and uh, probably bad tasting at first glance, but onions actually have a lot of health benefits to them. Benefits that Tulip is likely already aware of because she's so gosh darn smart. We also learn of Tulip's targeted destination, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, in order to arrive at a game design camp. Now this is a little bit unfamiliar to me because it's fall, the first episode takes place in November, and we even see snowfall shortly after. We can rule out Tulip being homeschooled as we see her walking out of a bus, so my only other explanation is that perhaps Tulip and her friend are on break. I believe depending on where you live in the world, you actually do get a fall break for school. So perhaps this break from school coincides with the duration of this camp. Maybe it's only a week long. It also appears Tulip and Michaela are headed into a forest. Perhaps this is where they like to hang out, goof around, and express their imagination. Similar to something like Craig the Creek, or even Bridge of Terabithia. Except without the drowning. However, the Infinity Train also appears to arrive at a station that's within this wooded area. Speaking of which, notice a lack of anyone surrounding Tulip when the train arrives with its ominous green glow? I propose a theory from the initial San Diego Comic Con teaser that perhaps Tulip ran away from home. After all, I personally wouldn't let a 12 year old travel alone to the point where you don't even know if they went off on the proper train. Like yeah, going back and forth from school is a different thing, but walking to a train station, waiting alone and then going on it? She should be having someone supervise her, and it appears as if it's nighttime, which might be an unusual time for a train to arrive and whisk someone off to a camp. Since Tulip's parents are nowhere to be seen, this could be why the Infinity Train is able to bring her on board. It's not the right train, but Tulip doesn't know that. Judging by dialogue later in the trailer, she's never actually been on a train before. Are there other people on here? Is this what trains are like? I wouldn't be surprised if after she boards and the Infinity Train leaves, the proper train ends up arriving. Tulip enters another train car, only to be met with a blank, 3D-like environment. The kind you see during those behind the scenes featurettes with models for films and video games. Which again, ties back into Tulip's interest. We see this room gets filled up with all sorts of colorful blocks, created by Tulip and One One's movement. It almost reminds me of Tetris in a way. We have another exterior shot of the Infinity Train, and if you look closely, we see Tulip in what I believe to be both halves of One One and another mysterious character. My guess is that this is the feline we meet later on in the trailer, inside their ball, and firing some sort of device. Maybe it's a tracking device, an explosive, something that'll seemingly help Tulip. The trailer then shows Tulip actually beginning to unload some serious questions, asking one one if he's a real robot, if anyone else is on board, and how do the doors work? These are intentional questions by the writers, Questions that we should keep in mind, as they will all likely provide answers to many mysteries in the series. Or just raise more questions. 
However, Tulip's excitement indicates to me that she's not aware she's stuck on this train quite yet. She just thinks this is a fun little train ride that will still take her to Oshkosh. This is a realization she shortly meets as she crashes the Halloween party of some peculiar beings. A giant worm with a hat, a giant stuffed animal octopus that reminds me of Octi from Powerpuff Girls, a cat, and what appears to be an actual big-headed vampire. I say a Halloween party because notice the balloons, the food and liquid with bones, eyeballs, spiders. One of these beings is wearing a mask. So although we know the first episode takes place in November, maybe time moves differently in some of these cars. Or they're celebrating Halloween late. Or they have no concept of time, and for them, it's Halloween all year long. Tulip running through the room and dashing towards the next train car, which is full of ducks. Hello, DuckTales fandom! Once Tulip is aware the train is never ending and she has no way out, alongside the mysterious number on her hands, the panic sets in and she scrambles from train car to train car until she comes to terms with the bizarre situation. We begin to enter territory that's a retold, reanimated version of the 2016 pilot. If I had to guess, this will be the second or third episode of the season. This reintroduction to Atticus, King of Corginia, establishes his presence as the third member of Tulip's group, requesting to assist Tulip on her journey. Tulip opens a door to a different train car, and we need to notice that she's only wearing one glove. Perhaps she initially only wears one glove to cover up the numbers in her hand, but either loses the glove or removes it and embraces her situation. Maybe she wears it as people on the train with glowing numbers on their hand are a target. They're wanted for something, for some reason. The trio enters a world where everything appears to be made of crystals, from its trees to its origami-shaped birds. Another scene shows Tulip without one one and seemingly another animal that's not Atticus, but potentially the feline character we see later, escorted by a water goddess, who clears the path in the ocean for their travel. I believe Tulip will have an entire adventure with this feline character before meeting Atticus and maybe even meeting one one Afterwards, we see Tulip and one one in a pinball machine car. My conclusion of a pinball car comes from the details and bumpers in the background. Things that can also be found in a pinball machine, with Tulip and 1-1 one -one encased in the ball itself. Considering the lack of Atticus, I'm assuming this won't be an entire episode, but rather a quick scene within the first episode or so. We're taken to the beginning of that Halloween party Tulip crashes, 1-1 one -one on her shoulder, lacking her one glove, her numbered glowing hand in plain sight. Also, this one green, uh, monster, for lack of a better word, is wearing fishnets. Nice! As one half of 1-1 one -one remarks some things they encountered were scary, he remarks they also encountered people dancing, to which the other, Sonoka half remarks, dancing is scary, which causes Atticus' obscure observation, morbid little thing, aren't you? To which 1-1 one -one answers, yes. Now, in the original pilot, this entire interaction is completely different, and honestly, a bit funnier. Well, looks like I'll have to start writing his obituary. Awfully morbid little thing, aren't you? Yes. Dancing is scary. Awfully morbid little thing, aren't you? Yes. But we're also missing context. If anything, it could have been edited for the trailer itself. Or it was toned down. Or they just didn't want to use the same joke twice. Tulip and Atticus slide on a smooth, reflective surface that looks like it's in the same train car they entered in a previous shot. And once more, slide down a colorful piano that changes color with each key. This was the same piano car that Cartoon Network created a puzzle out of to unlock the trailer itself. Back to before Tulip realizes her insane situation, she's excited to see what the next train car holds, but notice the snowfall. I don't believe there's a connection to the snowfall we saw earlier, but there is significance to this moment. This is where Tulip meets 1-1. One -One. The same Cartoon Network Facts video I referenced earlier stated when Tulip first meets 1-1, one -One, he's dressed as a snowman. The snowfall and her lack of awareness to the situation tells me this scene is one and the same with that fact. As Tulip enters what I believe to be Corginia, we get a look at how a train car opens. It spins in a circle that creates the infinity symbol. Tulip fighting the steward, attacking Atticus. Leading to the steward restraining Tulip and stating, Return to your seat! Just as they did in the pilot. Putting it side by side, I actually prefer the new art style, but I do miss Tulip's old glasses as they created the infinity symbol. Like, come on, that's genius design. Simple but innovative. We're taken to the first moment Tulip discovers the numbers in her hand, 
as assumably her glove falls off, and when she picks it up, she's met with an ominous green glow. This is in the room with all the wonderfully colored cubes. It also means that she doesn't get the numbers in her hand the exact moment she steps foot onto the train. It slowly manifests itself onto her. As Tulip discovers the alteration on her hand, the train violently shakes which could be due to the giant cloud in the sky shooting a concentration of energy directly into the ground. This supernatural force could be responsible for the numbers and infinite loop that tortures Tulip. Another scene from the pilot, Tulip encourages the corgis to take on the steward, and we get various smash cuts of different scenes. Tulip running, Tulip walking up Corginia with Atticus and one one just like in the pilot, we see Tulip inside an Indiana Jones-like car, chased by a giant boulder, which she manages to evade. We also see her running from golden glowing arrows, which may have activated from a trap. Already, I can see that Tulip is resourceful, she's quick to adapt to situations, and she's active. Those are all pretty good qualities for a 12-year-old. Tulip throws 1-1 down the cube car, his trail forming cubes, likely for her to safely and effectively escape the train car. We later see Tulip actually jump through a square hole through the cubes. We also see them embark in a bounce house car, or maybe it's just a full-on carnival car, but we only see the bounce house aspect of it. Although judging by the railing, it's just a bounce house car. The steward fires at Atticus who dodges the bullets just like from the pilot, and last but not least, for this breakdown, the mysterious feline figure asks Tulip if she wants to get off this train, implying that they have a way to help. But from both the tone and demeanor, I already get a vibe, this kitten is not to be trusted. Perhaps we have another antagonist in our hands, the steward just being one of many. Overall, it seems like this trailer just pulled from the first two or three episodes of the series, which I'm not complaining, because it shows these first three or so episodes are jam-packed with content, content I can't wait to dig into. But as always, these are just my thoughts and I want to hear yours. What do you think? What was your biggest takeaway from the trailer? What's the most interesting car you've seen thus far? And what are your thoughts on that mysterious feline cat? Let us know in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at Vids. And for more of my own, you can find me at Austin Vox. We're also on Instagram. Help the Rontable Girl by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please order a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Ashok Vox, signing out.